All right. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another student leadership lecture series video. This video will be focused on breaking down the performance style debate. This will apply to not only critical apps, but critical apps that take on more effective gestures. So reading poetry, breaking down um, common conceptualizations of how debate on a communication level should run, how we should think about argumentation, how we should think about competition. These are the type of affirmative, but also negative arguments that I will be speaking to from both an affirmative and negative perspective that I hope that can help um, for those of you who are building more critical based affirmatives, um, help in thinking through ask strategy as well as when you're negative thinking through that strategy if these are arguments that you're running as well as to the negative things to think of on the case debate how to be thinking about what the affirmative or what the negative if you are affirmative versus these arguments is saying and how to properly align oneself and before i begin if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to Bay Debates YouTube channel and look forward to more videos, not only from myself in regards to the Student Leadership Council, but also from weekly bottle practices and um, workshops and tournaments. All of that is recorded so that this can be an endless resource for all students, especially our Bay Area youth to utilize, to perfect and to work through through their debate experience. Without any more to say, let's get started with this. So the first is that every speech act is a performance in that you're bringing words to power through individuals who come through different backgrounds and trainings and that's performed based on the socio-cultural primers that that background affords so like i said in terms of different um training that can be education that can be how you were raised that can be the geography that you were raised the people that you went to school with the type of school that you went to what moral ideologies are being upheld over others and so you want to take that into account when we say performance everyone is performing that background and how they are thinking in the common places that can emerge between groups every single day so Next is that debate operates in a majoritarian cultural context of formalized rules that set the tone and resonance of performance of particular arguments. What I mean by uh, a majoritarian cultural context is that we believe that debate as supplied uh, today um, was made through a mutual understanding and acceptance of competition and how debate should operate. My pushback to that is one, debate is not just something that was supplanted or placed in front of us, um, but rather is negotiated in the round. But debate largely operates under the assumption that there is already a prior acceptance, a prior negotiation that sets the agreements for the debate. That is what these type of debates are going to challenge and ask questions to and maybe show some um, logical flaws when we accept that premise because maybe and I'm on the side of it does it negates a larger minoritarian i.e. difference and in excluded individual perspectives and cultural practices and understandings from the debate space that did not agree to the rules that debate was formally placed into or at least very strongly defended in the context of debate elites and programs and folks who quite frankly did not look like how I look like today, you know, this wonderful brown skin, um, as we grow into the history and present of um, debate. So, Sorry, y'all. The next is that understanding where your arguments reside within the mores of debate will be important for creating strategies and interrogative strategies in debates that apply 
uh, pressure to the social culture, understanding the reason as to why or where your argument rests itself is going to be super, super important as you are going to understand what is resistance, what is clash, what are the premises, what are the presumptions in the debate that are happening. The performative affirmative foundations and applications. Why and what are you affirming? The section, I want you to, to my affirmative folks, I want you to section out the affirmative based on the why and what you are affirming. This will help center the act in whatever sociocultural formation of majoritarian debate that it either refuses to engage or is agonistic. Second is antagonistic versus agonistic. So antagonistic is like, you know, two competing sides clashing with each other meant to always create some sense of disagreement so that a debate can occur. Agonistic is more so not as much of this, but maybe this, 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 or this. So it's not necessarily built to disagree with the same premise that the other side has, but rather maybe all, um, but rather understanding the scope, the framework, or the parameters of the disagreement to not really clash with each other. Maybe the differing opinions are different, but that does not mean that one is right over the other, but there might be one that is more preferable for a different set of reasons than the other. And so therefore clash might not happen at the center, clash might happen in weird, interesting spaces that a side of the debate that is being more antagonistic might not necessarily know where to shift their footing. And so um, it's important to know Know what are the differences, but also does the affirmation come from negation or does it come possibly separate place and form that is agonistic, a separate place and form, or is it a combination of both? The next is that is there a goal? Determining the endpoint, if that is relevant to your affirmation, um, is essential. Sorry, all my computer is uh, collapsing down. I'll be right there with you. Sorry, y'all. We're going to get back into performative apps. Sorry, y'all, I apologize. I've been, I'm talking to you all. Y'all asked me a lot of questions in the office hours, so I wanna make sure that I'm responding, but I apologize, let's continue. So um, after we ask the question of what is the goal, you wanna determine the end point and if that is relevant to your affirmation, is it essential and should it be based in the alternative socio-cultural context, i.e. if the affirmative is thinking about debate through a very normative traditional perspective and you are offering something a bit more clear, a bit more blackened, a bit more outside of normativity, what does that look like? What does that negate in the context of that traditional perspective? And what does it offer? Why should we go there? What is the point of going there? The next is framing. Um, I actually didn't.
Sorry, y'all. Once again, y'all keep on, um, y'all have a tournament coming up so you can ask me questions, but that's all right. We're keeping this very not formal. So framing, without a solid framing or foundation, this affirmative loses much of its solvency mechanism. You'll need to set up the why and what, and also what this debate is and what the negative is proposing um, from the perspective of the affirmative right. Um, already misses the point at the level of form, not content. Second is that you want to have two levels of the affirmative. This is going to be advantageous. One is the impact turn route or the counter method flash pick out of the lack thereof negative framing or framing within a particular sociocultural context. I said a lot of words, I'm gonna break them down. The first is the impact turn route. Why is fairness bad? Why are limits bad? Why are the way at least in which the negative is prescribing fairness, prescribing limits, prescribing education, prescribing deliberation skills bad? This looks like all of your dissets to framework, i.e. your impact turns. Um, and then your counter, uh, interpretation, which a lot of times uh, judges aren't voting on counter interpretations, so they're just voting on the impact turns, met with a really, really strong solvency argument um, on the affirmative case page, but there's that counter interpretation with the net benefits of the impact turn. Or, and this is why counter method is not described as a counter interpretation, um, is that it changes the context and scope of what the affirmative is, what the affirmative has to respond to, and what that respond to is the alternate sociocultural context, i.e. are we talking about blackness, are we talking about fairness, and what does talking about those things shift or change about the conversation um, that needs to be had. Solvency, y'all, the method of the ask, is it symbolic, conversational, normal means? Um, second is having a strong framing foundation sets the stage for what and how much the app needs to solve for. So you wanna make sure that you have explicit impacts in the language of the affirmative. Y'all, I cannot stress enough the amount of time wasted in the beginning speeches of affirmatives that just focus on the impact, but do not speak at the level of why you're reading the affirmative and why that has importance in the context of what debate looks like. That is part of your solvency. Ask yourself the question, if you were not to read this app, who would? You cannot start from the presumption that someone would unless you do, because if everyone thought that way, no one would read affirmatives that challenge you know, this majoritarian traditionalistic perspective. So you want to make sure that you're including that in the way in which you describe solvency, but also to make sure that you're framing your impacts in the language of the affirmative and to make sure that they are explicit to the app, not just fairness is bad or the way in which debate does things is bad, but what about the literature or what the affirmative is, you know, moving us to creates impacts, right, that I can think of in the context of your poetry or in the context of your satire, in the context of whatever activity that the argument that you're raising from the affirmative perspective we're focusing on does. So next is the counter method solvency pick. First, that this route for solvency requires the mechanism of the AF being better adapted to solve for the AF framing. Competition that is generated from this pick is usually based in the rules of debate or the resolution or the physical metaphysical space. And the debate is operating in that which disagrees with either the affirmative or negative that is engaging in the performative debate. Second is that explicit and external impacts of the affirmative or negative are needed in order to flesh out the unique role the performance has. So kind of going back to the first bullet point of competition that is generated from this pick is usually based in the rules of debate. If you win that the rules are bad, one, this 
must mean that the affirmative operates in a separate set of rules, which are better, or two, that the point of the affirmative is just to win, that these rules are bad and should not be compliant to because they produce some type of violence. And that the affirmative, because we do not comply to those rules, is picking out of following that understanding of competition or that understanding of affirmation or negation, depending on what side of the debate you are on which resolves the affirmative or resolves the negative because it means that, right, the debate or the affirmative that is not performative or the negative that is not performative is compliant to the rules that you are saying are bad and produce this violence that you are picking out of. The next is competition. This is the most important part of the debate for both the affirmative and the negative. The framing part of the debate helps emphasize and grant saliency. So this is if you're reading the performative argument or if you're not. If you're not talking about competition and having a robust defense for it on either side, both of you are failing in respect to having the substantive um, discussion on a case or about the um, debate. And so whichever side, competition arguments is the most warranted and impacted uh, in the debate. Some questions that uh, are posed are, how does the judge resolve the debate under this new socio-cultural context? Uh, model that the AF has proposed, does the AF, um, Oh, how does the judge resolve the debate under this new socio-cultural model the AF has proposed? Does that evaluation resolve the framing arguments? Does the evaluation re recreate the harms the AF is attempting to solve? Is there room to negate the AF under this new model? Can the negative engage? What role does the negative have with the type of affirmative that leads to the best debate? Has the affirmative outlined enough of the possibility of that? And are there some dissets uh, to not being able to engage the affirmative? All really, really important questions when we're thinking about what do we say versus these arguments? How do we engage? That first thought and statement is exactly where you begin is how do we engage? And if we can't engage, what is the value of having this debate? Competition part two. So this is where the negative has an opportunity to reframe the debate to their advantage and to reveal the ways in which one, there is no way to evaluate the act in a way their solvency framing requires within the scope of this debate. So the act has not done a good enough job of framing itself. Two, is that the evaluation of the affirmative will be resolved within the majoritarian scope because of its lack of counter evaluation framing, i.e. the world or the sociocultural context the affirmative wants to take the negative down um, does not have an ability to resolve itself. And so there's harms even outside of thinking about, you know, the negative understanding of competition. The next is three, current rules on competition are good. Defend that. Why is understanding that an affirmative maybe not has to defend the resolution if that's not the argument that you want to go for, but that the affirmative has a fair and equitable understanding of clash that is built in antagonism, built in being able to have a stable defense of an advocacy statement. Something, something, you know, to help create some type of understanding of how clash operates. Now, there is going to be a part two of this because I do understand that this is kind of dense and I want you all to have a really good grasp of how to exist in these debates. The next video or the next, yeah, the next lecture is going to be about framework uh, for the negative perspective, but also some more thoughts um, in regards to thinking through a compelling 2AC overview for critical arguments. I want to speak to what a lot of you all are um, composing together. And reminder, if there are videos that you would like to see, lecture topics that you would like me to focus on, please let me know and I will happily do those for y'all. And on that, I hope that y'all have a great rest of your night, day, morning, whenever you're reviewing this. And I look forward to the next video.